What is going on guys, this is your boy Astrum Sensei and welcome back to my cinematic cutscenes sequencer tutorial series for Unreal Engine 5. So in this video we are going to be looking at how to do custom events through the sequencer. So we are going to be looking at the event track and the blueprint that the sequencer makes or has and uh, we are going to see how to do with work with that, how to do multiple things with our characters and even our um, like levels or actors. So yeah, we are going to be checking all of that out. And I don't think it's going to be a long part. Honestly, it's going to be something kind of simple. So I'm going to start by going into the content browser to the sequences folder and to the character animation sequence that we made in the previous video. And what we're going to do as a start is, well, you see this part, Okay, you can see all of this, but for example, during this part, we are going to be changing the material of the character. So we're going to be doing that through an event and it's going to be a very basic thing. So the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to be checking out the regular events track, which is over here. We have two of them which is trigger and repeater. The one we are going to be checking out first is going to be trigger. So let's go ahead and add an event track and it's going to be a trigger. And over here, you can see that it's a brand new track on the on the timeline. So the thing that you want to focus on is where the thing is going to happen. So I'm going to do it on screen. Actually, I'm going to pick a second. So maybe this is going to be the part where she starts changing colors. Yeah, like this. So we're going to be changing her material using the event track. So when we want when, when you pick the second that you want the thing to happen, you just add a new key. Or you can even add trigger and repeater, but we're just going to add a new key. And we're going to right click, you can see that we have things that we can do. So, uh, well, first of all, we want to open the director blueprint for the sequence. And this will open this blueprint, which we saw in the first video. But what you can also do is right click on the event properties and go to endpoint, click on this one, create new endpoint. And what this will do is it will create a graph for the sequencer events. And it's going to create a new custom event for this specific thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to call it. Yeah, let's actually rename it. So I'm going to call it um, set character material. And there are multiple ways that you can do like approach this. So for example, we can actually like just click on this character specifically, add a track an event track, which can be a trigger. So this is separate from the regular event track. And you can like add an event and do the same thing. Or you can even um, like use things from this specific actor, such as uh, the skeletal mesh actor, for example, we can search for material, for example, set material, skeletal mesh component. So you can click on this one. Yeah, actually, this is the better way to do it. So you want to click on the specific actor, go to events, add a plus, and then do that where, you know, you search for set material and it will create a brand new event with the actual blueprint ready. This is better for things like characters, even character blueprints. You know, you can access all the custom events that your character blueprint has through this uh, track which is the events track. So the upper one can be something like when you want to cast to game mode or game instance, it doesn't have to be like connected to any actor that's inside of the level. For example, for this one, we can just go for, um, yeah, let's, let's actually look at this later. For now, we're just going to focus on set character material. So I'm just going to cut this name. I'm going to call this one, whatever. Then I'm going to name this set character material and the material it's going to be connected here. So now when you go to the timeline, you right click properties, you can see that you have element index and material. Both of them, you need to set those by right clicking on the uh, keyframe and going to properties and doing this, but we don't have the material. So I'm just going to go here with the character selected. You can um, copy this. 
duplicate and for example we can make it red yeah that's fine then you can right click properties material and you can search for the the same name as the first uh, yeah you can see you have the red one here so we can choose that and also you can see that this one is at element 2 so you need to change element index to whatever uh, material slot you are setting I'm gonna ignore the first two so yeah it's okay so now you can see it doesn't happen when you are actually in preview mode you have to play the game so uh, I'm gonna go to level blueprint and in the level blueprint you can make you like make sure that you have the event begin play and then create level sequence player and play and you choose this sequence specifically so that we can preview it and now if we hit play you can see that it actually works so let's wait for her to dance and she turns red so that's how you use events inside of uh, sequencer so this way you can actually influence the actual game world through cutscenes and this works in so many ways you can even create a uh, quick time events using this or uh for example in my easy rpg dialogue system i use this to actually stop the game while uh, or stop the sequence or pause it while dialogue is on so yeah this is really useful you really want to learn this it's it's better for actual games rather than making movies in the engine so I really recommend it and the amount of things you can do with this uh, code is actually infinite so for example you can actually set skeletal mesh you can uh, do many many things so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually copy this event and I'm gonna go one second further and I'm gonna paste it and you can right click and change the material that you want to choose so I'm gonna bring it back to the white one and now uh, I think it's gonna work yeah it's, it is gonna work so I'm, there's no need to preview it yet uh, this one it works and you can even reuse it so I, I usually copy paste it but you can actually like uh, add an event then go here properties endpoint set character material and you can see that it's the same event, but it actually works. So uh, yeah, that's that's just it. It 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 works basically. So I'm gonna delete this, and I'm gonna delete all of them actually. There's no need. And you can use this on the, for example, the player character, or any enemies, any NPCs. Basically, you can make them do things that are custom events in those character blueprints or even actors like things like doors you can open doors with the sequencer it just works you just need to make an event and make it work now we are going to be checking out the other type which is which you know it's the event that has its own track uh, this is going to be also simple so basically you have an event for example i'm going to cast to game mode cast to third person game mode get game mode so this one it requires casting and it's not really like as simple it's, it is simple but this one's even better because you don't even have to cast it's just going to take whatever actor is on the level and then uh, influence it but this one it's it doesn't have to be on the level to actually like it doesn't have to be in the world outliner to actually cast and do the event so for example we have the third person game mode and let's go to the content drawer and do some custom event on the game mode so that we can test it so it's in third person blueprints third person game mode and then open the full blueprint editor event graph or uh, sorry custom event for example something you can do with this is you can actually save using a uh, custom events that are played in the sequencer or even like anything basically i'm just gonna call it game i can't really think of an example so maybe we should just print string so i'm gonna call it print string 
game over or whatever and then we're gonna print string as the custom event and basically this can be any line of code um yeah we don't need yeah actually let's do this so uh you can see that we have this basic event now we can go back to the character animation sequence director blueprint and yeah this is for this specific sequence so each specific sequence has its own director blueprint and over here um well we did the compile so yeah we can just search for the custom event that we made and then you can uh for example either type whatever you want or you can connect it to the this part so with it connected like this uh you can actually edit it whatever content it's going to print inside of the sequencer though i'm going to rename this because it's a mess so i'm just going to call it print string from cutscene you know this is just an example by the way and then we can actually close all of this stuff and then we have it in the events track so i think we already put it yeah we put it so you can just go here and put the string so it can be whatever you want for example we can just print dialogue as an example for example she's gonna say you can't defeat me baka and then when we showcase the player He's going to say, we can copy paste this by the way, or you can just, um, you can just add a keyframe, then uh, right click properties, then go here. You can see the call function. We have both of them, both of the ones we created. So this one's not going to work probably because we do not have a reference for whatever character we want to set the material for. But since this one actually casts and doesn't need a reference, it's going to work. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to delete this and we can just say, um, go here, print string. And then he's going to say, uh, I can defeat you with the power of friendship and now if we actually hit play you can see that it works so he walks to her and we deleted the set character material so it's not going to happen but you can see it's actually print strings she says you can defeat me baka and then he says i can defeat you with the power of friendship and yeah, the cutscene ends. So one last thing we want to check out is the repeater events. It's a very basic thing. So you add a track or even like over here, plus repeater. And you can see that it shows a different kind of track because you cannot really add keyframes. You can either set the start and end to it, or you can right click and do stuff here, but you can't really add keyframes. And that is because a repeater is a, basically it's the same as this regular event, but it's gonna keep repeating for every frame of the sequence since it starts playing until the end or until, you know, it stops at the end point of it. So I'm gonna right click and we're gonna try to copy those or do those until, um, you know, we can see how that works. So right click properties, endpoint, quick bind, print string from cutscene. And um, yeah, it's just gonna use this one. So we can save. Sometimes, you know, it opens this and it shows an error. You just need to compile and save most of the time unless something's missing. Uh, anyway, we have this one, it works here. So you can just pick whatever string you want. I'm just gonna call it uh, repeater test so this is what's going what it's going to say in the uh, print string now we're going to hit play and see how that looks so you can see that it happens it keeps happening every single tick throughout the sequence until the point where it's no longer there so you can see that the repeater test is gone at this point you know maybe we need to put it closer just to see the difference so you can see that it's gonna happen and end too quickly now because it's smaller. Yeah, you can see that. Basically, that's it. That's what repeaters are. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. It was basic and simple and I really enjoyed doing it. It's really important actually, like a lot of people 
tend to ignore this when doing sequencer tutorials. So yeah, I really hope it becomes useful and you find multiple ways to use it. If you guys enjoyed the video, please make sure to hit the like button and subscribe if you are new to the channel. And also check out my Patreon and don't forget to wishlist my game in the workplace of madness. It's already on Steam, so the link's gonna be in the description and I'd really appreciate the support on that. And I will see you guys in the next video. Take care, have a great day and bye.